Hello everyone, my name is Cyprien and today we are going to look at three steps that are involved in a person's salvation. There are three steps that a non-believer goes through before he receives eternal life. Now we say salvation is an accomplished work of God by God to the glory of God. Now, when it comes to salvation on the cross, everything was accomplished by Jesus Christ. And that put the entire world in a savable position. You know, before Christ came, the world was on the way to the lake of fire. And so Christ came in to intervene through his sacrificial work, death, on the cross and he alone did the dying he alone did all the suffering and he resurrected as a proof that death could not conquer him this puts the world in a savable position but you know there is one thing to be it is one thing to be in a savable position it is another thing whether you are going to be saved. Because of Jesus' death on the cross, you are in a savable position. If you are watching this video and you have not personally believed that Jesus died for your sins, I want to tell you that you are in a savable position, but you are not saved yet. You can be saved. And if you can be saved, there are three steps that are involved. Two of the steps, the first two steps, are things that as an unbeliever you will go through or you have to do. Then the last of the three steps is something that God accomplishes or God does. So we are going to go to the board and I will take you through uh, these steps as uh, it, is, it is explained or we are told through Apostle Paul. Paul wrote from Rome when he was in prison, when he wrote to uh, the Ephesians. And in chapter 1, verse 13, Paul is going to tell us how a person gets saved. And this is the standard by which every unbeliever goes through before he gets saved. So without wasting much time, let's go to the board and let me show you the three steps and what an unbeliever is supposed to do. It was the same steps that we went through that we got saved if we are Christians and if we are not Christians and we are uh, we still remain unbelievers then this is an opportunity for you to pay attention to the gospel and then make a decision as to whether you personally believe that Jesus died for your sins or not. So let's go to the board. Now, on the board, we have the three steps in salvation or the three steps that are involved in salvation. Like I was saying, this salvation is not about Christ's accomplished work on the cross, but this salvation is about how man can benefit from that accomplishment, how a non-believer can benefit from that work of God. You need to go through three steps before you can benefit from what God's already accomplished work of salvation. If the world still refuses to believe in Jesus Christ, it still does not cancel the fact that the world is not is in savable position. It still does not cancel the fact that Christ's salvation is an accomplished work. So we are looking at the three steps today so that the unbeliever can have an understanding of how he can receive eternal life or how he can become a child of God or how he can one day end up you know uh, in heaven forever and ever with God. The first step 
is hearing of the gospel. Now, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, Paul has this to say. He said, In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. So this is the first step. Paul says, after listening to the message, what message? He goes ahead and says, the gospel of your salvation. So these are the steps. The steps involved are these. The first is hearing of the gospel. A hearing must take place before a believing can follow. A hearing must what? Take place before believing can what? Follow. So if you look at Romans chapter 10, 17, Paul says that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. In other words, before a person can have faith or a person can believe, that's why we have believe here. Believe or faith comes by first hearing and hearing something. You see, faith doesn't only work with regards to the Bible or salvation, but faith works in all aspects of our lives. You can believe that you have an anchor. You can believe that your team has called. Unless you were first told, there is no way you could have imagined. So that is the same is true when it comes to salvation. You must first hear. And what you hear is the gospel. And when you hear, you can now believe. So Paul says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And the gospel is this. First Corinthians 4 tells us about the death barrier. First Corinthians 15, 3, Paul tells us about the death barrier and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why we call the gospel, which is what? Which is the death, the barrier, and then the resurrection. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what constitutes the gospel. Now, hearing. Hearing comes through the ear gate. It comes into our mind. We process the information whether Jesus actually died. Now, the scripture says Jesus died. He, he, he was buried. He rose. If we listen to this message, and it is a hearing that we must take part of it. God, the Holy Spirit, does not infuse the gospel in us. The Holy Spirit does not hypnotize us to understand the gospel independent of our will. No, our will must be involved. Our will must play an active participation. We must, we must be actively involved in the hearing. In the hearing, the gospel must be declared, yes, but when it comes through our ear gate, whether you were reading an article and it was explaining the gospel, or an evangelist was giving the gospel, or a preacher was giving the gospel, you first heard it. And if you want to be saved, you have to give an active participation of the hearing. That is the only way you can understand the explanation of the gospel. Then after that, you must what? You must believe. After the active hearing of the gospel, you must believe. It is one thing to hear, it is one thing to, to concentrate, to listen, to pay attention. It is another thing to believe. So the moment 
having heard, you believe, as we have in John 3, 18, whosoever believes in him is not condemned, but whosoever believes not in him is condemned already. Why is an unbeliever condemned already? Because the entire world was, I mean, already in judgment. And Christ has put the world in a savable position. But then the one who refuses to take advantage of Christ's death is still condemned. And that's why Jesus is, is, is sort of describing the reality. He, he didn't come to condemn or judge the world. He came to save. And he succeeded in placing the world in a savable position. But then, we, the unbeliever, is still under condemnation and judgment if he fails to believe that Jesus died for his sins, was buried, and then was resurrected. These are the steps that the believer must participate in. Now, the last of the steps is what God alone does. It says that the first step, in him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, that is the second step, this is the result, you were, you were sealed, you were sealed. Paul is saying that the Ephesians had been sealed at the time that he was writing to them. It was not his letter that was going to make them saved. He was only telling them that at some point in time in their life, when they believed the gospel, after hearing, this was what happened to them. They were sealed past tense. So the Ephesians had been sealed up until Paul wrote them such a letter. And the same is true with every person who personally believes in Jesus Christ. At that moment that you believe, the Holy Spirit seals you. Not only sealing that the Holy Spirit does, He also gives you eternal life. The Holy Spirit gives you eternal life. At the same time, you become a child of God. At the same time, the Holy Spirit indwells you. In fact, so many things happen to you. But our emphasis here today is to explain the three steps that an unbeliever goes through before he gets saved, before he benefits from the already accomplished work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. So when the person gets saved, of course, he moves from being an unbeliever to become a believer. And never again can he move back to become what? Never again can he move back to become an unbeliever. It is an irreversible uh, 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 place. It is. It is. It is. It is something that is. Uh, once once you, you you get saved and you are placed into that position of being a child of God or having eternal life, it is irreversible. It cannot be reversed. So you cannot become an unbeliever again. You can be carnal, you can be miserable, you can be frustrated, you can be unhappy. You can, as a result of rejecting the word of God in your life, you can even say, well, I don't believe in God anymore. I am not atheist. Well, who cares? You are still saved, but you are going to be a miserable person. Why? Because at some point in time in your life, point of time, at some point in time, you believed. Not continue believing, but what? At the point that you, at the point when you believed, 
and the same time you were sealed. How long does it take God to seal us? Just the same moment that we believe, the same moment He seals us. It, it's not a process. It is an instantaneous work of God. So these are the three steps that a non-believer needs to follow. And as you can see, this guy here is having a faith alone in Christ alone t-shirt. And he is saying that, look, I believe in Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And this is all that I did to be saved, to become what? A believer. Thank you so much for watching and continue to pray for our ministry so that we can also be a blessing to many. God bless you.